So you rock 90. You said, bro, are you big on honeybee conservation since they're not doing too well right now? We need them. I'm really uh, a fan of bees, particularly native bees. So Texas um, has a ton of native bees and, and Utah has called the beehive state because Utah has so many native bees. I, I'm actually, this is a, a good thing to identify. I love bees and I think that we should be really protecting all bees but especially the native bees. One of the things about honeybees is they actually are invasive species and they compete with native bees. So I am not too much of a fan of honeybees, actually. I don't really buy honey that much because I don't really want to support that industry. It's, it would be it, um, a good way to think about it is it's like cows. Cows are not great for the environment, but we love to eat beef and we love milk. Now, honeybees, Apis mellifera, are native to Europe. So our European friends, they're native to your area. They've evolved for the, the you know, European plants. That's perfect. In Texas, we have no native bees that make honey. So we have brought in an invasive species to make honey. So one of the things that uh, we... It, this is a very delicate topic. And in, in North America... Oh, Remy, you finished the beacon. Okay, maybe before we end stream, we'll go check it out. We'll talk about bees right now. Bees are canceled. Uh, so yeah, when I was at the Botanical Garden, I worked for a nonprofit. And the nonprofit, my job was to educate people based on the science. And the science is saying, hey, honeybees from Europe in Texas are, are competing with native bees. And the native bees are dying out. We, we brought in someone from a native bee organization to ask her, you know, what she thought. And um, the argument of the native honeybees is more uh, strong. Scientifically, and in terms of like conservation, utilizing European honeybees uh, for honey production is equivalent to raising cattle. The only difference is that we don't let cows run into other people's yards and start eating their stuff. And so honeybees uh, are, should be conceived in the United States as uh, domesticated like farm animals. So like chickens are not from North America. Uh, do V. This is shocking, yeah. So one of the things that people identify about it's Apis mellifera is the European honeybee. Apis mellifera can be an indicator species for native bees, which is true. If the invasive bees that make honey are dying out, then the then the native bees might not do well. Well, that's true. And sure, that's that's the case. That's accurate. But then the native bees are already not doing well because there's data suggesting that European honeybees are more aggressive and they will like they will fight the native bees uh, for food. And so, yeah, my perspective is that data is suggesting that we should uh, we should be cautious about promoting honeybees because they compete with the native bees in a sense that the native bees end up getting diminished populations. Native bees are better pollinators. Native bees uh, are better adapted to living in our environments. So, there, and I know about Texan bees. I don't know about bees in other places. There's a bee in, in Texas. That we have native we have native bumblebees north to North America. Uh, a lot of the bees in Texas are what we call solitary bees. So they live by themselves. And because they live by themselves, they're not making a bunch of honey to store for like a community. They'll go and eat what they need. They'll eat pollen and, and sugar and things. And that's it. Because they're not protecting anything, they don't sting. The native bees in my area do not sting. So people are like, oh my god, I'm afraid of this. Well, the bees not it's literally not gonna sting you. They have a stinger, but they will they will not use it. There are several bumblebees native to my area. Some of them are solitary, but some of them are colonial. They live in hives. But they live in hives in the ground. And so honeybees are just like suburban America. Uh, one of the things about native bees in Texas is that they, their habitat is what people in in homes will call 
unruly and kind of um, unkept. But habitat for a, a native bee is a fallen tree and dead leaves. And so it is a, Zilker Botanical Garden has a ton of native bees. And uh, Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center has a bumblebee hive. And I went a week or two ago and there were like 30 bumblebees. And they had to put a sign that said, hey, these are our native bees. They're not going to hurt you. They're like this big. They're like this big and they're real loud, you know. Um, so, yeah. There are bees native to Mexico that make honey that could potentially be imported into uh, Texas, but they're still not native. They're closer to native and they might provide some benefits, but there's a lot of reasons why uh, going pro native bee is good. So one native bees evolved with our flowers and they are, they are better pollinators. Their, their like physical structure, their body, and everything is better fit for the native flowers of the area. Um, two, they're better adapted for our climates. Three, there's a variety of different bees. Uh, they're solitary, so they don't sting. There's uh, Some bees are green. We have bees here that are green. Let me just show you, actually. Yeah, so native bee... I, I, I'm, I don't really talk about it too much because it can irk some people. There are certain people that are really diehard, like, pro-honeybee. Okay, why are you pro-honeybee? At the end of the day, it it really comes down to, like, capitalism. And, like, colonialism, really. So, like, the European honeybees can be concisely and properly put into a, a little box. You need a queen, you move the queen, and everyone follows in a box. And then you move that box around and they do what you want. And then you can take the honey and make money. Native honeybees, you cannot move them wherever you... Or native bees. Native bees don't have a product. You cannot move them wherever you want. You can't just move native honeybees or native bees. Native bees live in dead trees. And then people are like, oh, look at all this trash. This is not trash. These are leaf litter. These are broken dead trees. Fungi are breaking us down. Insects live in there. Um... Who do you need to ban? No. So when I worked at the Botanical Garden, there was me and someone else who both kind of did education. One of the people worked for the city and I worked for a nonprofit. I could say whatever I wanted to. And the city person was informed to maybe not tell people that honeybees are invasive, even though they're, they're invasive. The same way cows are invasive. Um, but uh, yeah. So there's, there's a lot we can discuss. You had me a non-stinging, Lucy Goose, yeah. It, so it really boils down to, like, production, capitalism, and, like, colonization. And so, one, if you have a farm of, of trees, or fruit trees, and you need to get pollinated, well, what you do is you say, okay, well, I'm going to bring in the honeybee guy. And the honeybee guy brings his box, and they pollinate your trees, and all this stuff. Anyway, it, it, it's good to be aware of it. It's not like we're not going to have honeybees anymore. Unless they all go extinct. I mean, that would, you know, not be great because honeybees still do provide pollination benefit benefits. Um, and they're important in some industries. Like, I know that I like to eat apples. And when I eat apples, I am accepting uh, the reality that they were probably pollinated by honeybees. And so someone, you know, that's not a huge issue. It, the same way that if I were to if eat chicken, you know, I know that someone is raising chicken and... You know, that's it. You love your bumbly bees. Yeah. Bumbly bees. Okay. I'm trying to find a good picture of all the different bees here. Native, native bees. Okay. Here we go. Butterflies, bats, mosquitoes, hummingbirds. What other pollen? Um, oh, so beetles. Beetles are important. Pollinators. Flies. Flies are critical. Wasps, mosquitoes. Um, the majority of a mosquito's diet is actually um, nectar. And only some of the females drink blood. When it's really cold outside, the very like in March, the very beginning uh, of spring in Texas. Guess who the primary? Guess who the primary pollinator is? The little flies. There's hoverflies. There's a ton of different insects and flies that actually pollinate. Um. Yeah, beetles, flies, wasps, important pollinators. Recon blue. Hello. 
you uh, always love learning something. The Polytomaker is a species of wolf in Ethiopia that's, fi that's filmed unexpected licking flowers. Ooh. Carnivores could perform pollination as well. Giant ground-bound bees. That's funny. So these are some pictures of bees. Um, on the top here, it says solitary blue orchid bee. This is what a bee house looks like uh, for someone who wants to build one. So for people who have native plants in their yard, uh, you will often see them with these little structures with holes in them. Shall we begin? Oh, Remy, okay. Let's get the moving and grooving. You don't believe it. Okay, we'll get back to our bees. But for now, we're going to do little community exercises. Let's do some push-ups. Oh, Gustavo, you made a bee hotel in your garden. That's great. So that's what we call them. We call them bee hotels or insect hotels. And uh, what happens is solitary bees will live by themselves. They'll make a little hole in a piece of wood, in a dead tree, or if you already make the hole, they'll live in there for you. The thing on the top right is an example of a bee hotel. It's not the best because what you want to do is you want to clean it uh, in the spring once the bees leave. But the bees will go in there, lay their eggs, and then leave and then fill the hole. The bees will hatch in the spring and then, you know, they'll, they'll lay like 30 eggs and the bees will come out. So, there's a bunch of different bees here. Solitary longhorn bee. Very Texan, the longhorns. You know, go longhorns. When, Remy, you did 50. Nice. You've been trying to do 150 push-ups a day with your other workouts. That's, that's a, intense. Congratulations. 150, wow. You haven't seen bee hotels, but you've seen frog hotels. Yeah. You had to meet your with your painting professor. Nice. Well, Sean, we're talking about bees right now. I, look, I like this metallic bee. This little green bee is fun. Anyway, there's a leaf cutter bees. Leaf cutter bees line cavities with leaves or petals. And look at this. This little bee will like rip holes. And then you can see it like covers its home with leaves. Yeah, the black and blue one is cool. You love bees until they fly at you. So we're talking about solitary bees. Um, there's certain bees in Texas that live by themselves and they don't sting because they don't have anything to defend. Anyway, I, uh, that, you opened a can of worms there. You're, you rock. Thanks for asking. Yeah, big fan.